Oregon State Hall of Fame and the State of Oregon Hall of Fame as well. Uh, let's give a hand to Steve Priest. This reminds me of the, the track meets when Foz was jumping. The pit would be here and people would be everywhere. And there'd be one long line that went about polling hall and Foz would be out there rocking. Getting ready to run. <laughs> that was after he perfected the style. I'm here today to really talk for, for our classmates, class of 65 and those great years with Foz. We all came in together as freshmen. Um, there was a difference. Uh, the tall skinny kid from Medford who had the unusual jumping style. There was a difference in what he thought and what we all thought. None of us thought we could change our position, change our sport, change everything around us and make it something better. And Foz always did. It didn't necessarily have to be the high jump. He, he looked at things in general around the world and did that. When we got here in 65, Foz had already been involved in the Fosbury flop, but it wasn't even called the flop by then. He was still working at it. And I don't know whether you've heard how it happened, but it's maybe the most interesting thing of all. He was jumping as a sophomore in high school in Medford, um, a big, as you know, athletic school and with a great athletic history. And Foz had, uh, was trying to find you know, himself like we all do and where his sport was, where he was good. And he tried football and basketball and he was high jumping. And it's, his max height was five foot four at that time. And he was the scissor guy. You know how, you remember the scissor and you'd run parallel over the bar and you'd go up in the air and your legs would scissor and you'd go over and come down and you'd be standing up when you came. And Foz was able to go five four there. And he was in a meet, an eight way meet in Grants Pass, an invitational. And he'd never scored a point for Medford at that point in time, right Foz? And he's, he's at the meet and he finds out that the first height that he's jumping at is five foot four his max, and he's lucky enough to clear it, and as he clears it, he hits his bottom on the bar, and he thinks to himself, my, my feet get way over this bar, I've got to get my butt higher, and as he got to 5'6", in midair, Foz leaned, laid back on his back, flipped his butt up in the air, and went over. It was literally described later as a decision that he made in midair as a sophomore in high school. I mean, really, it's the truth. He went, he made 5'6", made 5'8", made 5'10". He went six inches higher than he'd ever gone before in that meet. Nobody knew what to call it. It was the flip. They were even tried to rule it as illegal, saying he, he didn't go off of one foot. All kinds of different things, but he kept getting better. He kept changing it. He, he went from a sideways run to and then forward and then it came to a big J and he got farther away and increased his speed because he knew that speed could offset force and power and give you a higher height. So he made all these changes and when he got to Oregon State in 1965 he ran into a bunch of guys in, in his class and our athletic teams that um, believed they could do a lot in those in those days but nobody Nobody believed they could change their position, they could change their sport like the Fosbury. We watched him and he was a, a sense of pride for us as athletes at Oregon State. Dick was a part of what we did as an athletic department as, as every team from track on down. It was truly remarkable. Foz was so close to our football team, he, and his, to make extra money, he held the chains on the sideline. He was there when we beat SC 3-0. <laughs> he was, you know, a, a very special friend to so many of us um, that we made him as, as a part of our teams who made him an honorary giant killer several years ago. He's been to all our reunions and comebacks and so forth. And um, when this happened, we all said, nobody killed giants like Dick Fosbury. <laughs> he was an amazing guy. Um, I, I, you've heard the, the way he performed in the Olympics in the trials. He had the trials actually stolen from him once. He, he won it in LA, had to go do it again because of the altitude levels at Echo Summit. Did it again, once on your last jump, I recall, uh, and then won it in the Olympics. And it was a lesson to everyone. That year in 68, when he started to jump, there were the 45 best jumpers in the world. I believe 44 used 
the straddle. One, one, use that jump. I think there's an analogy made of, of the Fosbury flock that finally named in 68. And, that, and someone said, if you imagine going, going for a bicycle ride, learning how to ride a bicycle while you're putting the bike together. <laughs> that, that truly is how this came about and how he developed it. Everything here was Dick Fosbury. He also, with Bernie Wagner's help, finally, after he and Coach Wagner worked out there, what kind of stride he ever kind of used, he was going to make a long jump. This became a great high jumping school. Uh, John Raditan, Steve Kelly, there were many, and they all followed suit. None of them, none of them were floppers when they got here, and they all followed Foz. I could go on forever about him and, and talk for, about all the things he's done and, and what he did in a tough time. The Olympics in 78 were a, a special time because it was a different kind of an Olympics. There were near boycotts, there were racial issues. Dick was a part of all that and he's always stood socially on this campus even in school um, for justice. And I think that's what made him special to, to us. He was always different. It wasn't just his high jump. That was different enough, but it wasn't just the high jump. He was different in so many ways that we all loved and we revered. So I, I want to, it's my pleasure, is the way I should say it, to introduce a guy who's my classmate, who changed his sport, changed the high jump, and changed the way coaches and players relate forever. In every sport now, players will take the lead and, and have ideas, and that's because of this guy, our teammate, our giant killer. Dick, come on up, man. glad Fox went first because uh, seeing this was is like standing on the podium at the Olympic Games watching your flag go up playing the national anthem and the emotions just roll over you and you really don't know whether you can speak or not and and I'm I'm kind of speechless but I I know that I want to uh, thank Oregon State University, thank you, President Ray and, and Director uh, uh, Scott Barnes for, and all of the people that have been responsible for putting this together. Uh, <coughs> Ellen has done a, a magnificent job. It's, it's art, it's engineering, uh, it's structure, and it flows. And, and I love it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just so impressed. And uh, it's great to be here. This is an amazing day. It's a historic day for all of us. Uh, and and uh, I, I want to tell you a few things. Uh, some of you have read my book, and, and thank you for the plug. Uh, <laughs> the Wizard of Oz, and, and Bob Welch is right behind me. Uh, the wonderful author, we, we worked together and, and I think it was his best writing and really tells the, the story that was never told uh, about my growing up. Uh, my sister and I were born in Portland. Uh, my family is here and, and I want to recognize uh, my family. My wife, Dr. Robin Tomasi, where are you, Doc? I lost you. She's over here. She's a UCLA Bruin, a uh, graduate of medical school, dental school, and uh, we, we have a wonderful relationship, and we're so happy to be here at Oregon State. My sister, uh, Gail, is here in the front row. Uh, she came with her husband, Jim. Thanks, Gail. My son, Eric is out here. Eric, where are you? <laughs> He's here somewhere. <laughs> He's kind of shy. He's the shy one of the Fosburys. 
And and my niece Dieta, Gail's daughter. Where are you, Dieta? There you go. <laughs> awesome. I, so we're born in Portland. We migrated south to Medford, uh, where I became a, uh, a Roosevelt Rough Rider. Uh, I was a Henry Cornet, and I was a Medford Black Tornado. And I know, I know my Medford boys are here. Uh, where are you, boys? And here's one. All red and black, and uh, I know the Medford girls are here too. Uh, can't forget about them. Uh, we've got a really great class, and and uh, I was prepared uh, to come to Oregon State uh, to study engineering. And uh, here at at Oregon State, uh, I became a Theta Chi. Yeah. Yeah. with the Dare to Jump t-shirts. That's awesome. And uh, I became an honorary giant killer. Uh, I, uh, I was not an exceptional standard. St student, let me just straighten out the record. I was a barely eligible student <laughs> that got my degree in civil engineering technology uh, thanks to my professor Hal Pritchett and uh, the engineering school uh, which I'm I'm very proud because today I'm I'm a retired civil engineer and land surveyor and uh, because of my teammates on the track team and the students that I was here with. Uh, my teammate John Radicic is here today. Uh, he, I was able to convert him to the Fosbury flop <laughs> where he proceeded to break the indoor world record. And uh, our teammate Steve Kelly, uh, men's track team. If, if I could take one second, men's track team, could you stand up and be recognized? Vollmer, I saw you here. Coach Chuck. Woo! Thank you, guys. Part of the history of Oregon State when we beat the Ducks. <laughs> Consistently. Okay. And, and so this, this was an amazing experience for me, and my path was clear. Uh, Olympic sport in those days was amateur. I was going to become a professional engineer. I wanted to be, build communities, uh, design and uh, provide proper infrastructure for healthy communities. So it, it wasn't a straight path, but it was a path that, that I was to follow. And on my way, on that path, I became an Olympian. And my life as an Olympian, we have a saying, once an Olympian, always an Olympian. And I've always been an Olympian, and I, I respect that so much. Thank you. My teammate, Tim Vollmer, uh, made the team in 72. We know what that experience is like, and it, it transforms us forever. And one of the things that we learned about is service to society, that we have a role to play. And as an engineer, I understand clearly in protecting health, safety, and welfare. We have a responsibility of what we do on this planet. Because as we occupy the earth, we travel, traverse the oceans, the rivers, we fly through the air, uh, and, and as the oceans warm and the cycles shift, we need to adapt to preserve our environment. Today we've had more fires, we've had bigger storms, we've had smoke in the sky, this is not healthy. We need to work on cleaning up what we are living in, what our environment is. And 
And for you students, you student athletes or students, whatever you're studying, take the opportunities to learn. Broaden your education and your experience. Expand and enjoy your extracurricular activities. Doesn't matter if you sing, you dance, you act, express yourself. Express who you are because each of us is an individual. In, in, as an Olympian, we learn to train for life. It's about our body, our mind, and our spirit. Our body needs training to be able to live a long and happy life. Our mind needs to be trained to be able to control our emotions and learn how to behave. And our spirit that we've been given is important to help to drive us and, and encourage us to find where, what our place is, is in the world. So today, I, I believe that this statue is, is uh, it's a reflection for all of us, uh, for all of you students, to inspire, to motivate, and for you to create, to innovate, and always be, uh, be prepared as they raise the bar. You don't have control over that. And it's gonna take great strength. And, and so, I, you know, I'm very proud to be a beaver and, and I wanna just leave with one thing. And that is, give me an O. Oh. Give me an S. Yes. Give me a U. You. What's that spell? Oregon State. That's awesome.